Okay, next up is the line slash coordinate geometry question. And again, they ask this question every single year. So I went through all the past papers and I predicted this question for you. And all you really need to know for this question is these few formulas. So you need to know and understand these formulas. Uh, you've got the gradient of a line formula, the length of a line formula, like and the midpoint of a line segment, the equation of a line, which all you need is a point on the line and the gradient of that line. You need to understand the, the relationship between the gradient of a line, two lines perpendicular to one another. And I'll go through and prove those to you in a minute. But here is the example exam questions. And this, this worksheet is over 60 pages long. So I put a lot of work into it and it's a great resource. Um, and I've categorized it. They can only really ask on this line slash coordinate geometry question three ways. They can ask you to find the equation of a line, normal line or tangent line, which is a bunch of those type of questions here. They can ask you to find the perpendicular bisector, um, the equation of that line. And there's a bunch of examples there. And they can ask you to find like the midpoint of a line, uh, find the equation of a line, the gradient of a line, distance between two lines, form um, two points formula, all of those kind of things grouped together. And there's all of these different types of questions here. And then there's a mixture of all of them, which are like quite big ones. And this this question usually accounts for 10%. So it's a, it's a big question. And you've got all those examples here. And I've gone through and answered every single last one of them. So this is a great resource. So go through that. Right. So basically, you only need to understand these formulas. And so I'm going to go through and derive these for you to start this off. And then we'll go through and we'll answer uh, one question from each of those categories. So let's just get into this. Oh, look at that beautiful line. So let's say we have two points here. Let's call it point A. So we can call that with the coordinates x1, y1 and point B with the coordinates x2, y2. And let's say you have a line joining those two coordinates together. So obviously this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this here would be x1 and this here would be x2 and this here would be, oh, this here would be y1 and this here would be y2. So let's say if we wanted to derive the gradient formula. So the, what's the gradient of this line? Well, we know the gradient is rise over run. So what is our rise and run here? So if we just look at it like this, well, our run is this distance here, which is x2 minus x1, if you can see that. And our rise is this distance here, which is y2 minus y1. So simply our rise is y2 minus y1, and our run is x2 minus x1. So that's the gradient formula right there. Um, another thing we can derive here is the length between these two points, or the length of this line segment. And the length of this line segment, if you remember, you know, from Pythagoras' theorem, like C, A, B, well, we get C squared equals A squared plus B squared. The hypotenuse squared equals the two, the sum of the two lines squared. And so the length of this line is C squared, so here and here. So we can call this L squared equals A squared, which is our X2 minus X1 squared plus our Y2 minus Y1 squared. And if we square root both sides, we get that formula right there again using these two points. Another thing is from this, let's say if we wanted, to, if you want to find it, so they'll ask you to find equations with lines all the time. And when you want to find an equation of a line, all you need is the gradient of that line and a point on that line. And you can get that through that formula. So we know that m equals y minus y1 over x minus x1 from this formula. If y and x are now variables, then this will become y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And that's just the equation of a line formula. And you use this all the time. So you need to understand that. And finally, midpoint. Obviously, the midpoint here is just going to be 
So we can call it M is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2. If you can see that, if you if you want the midpoint, you want halfway between there and halfway between the the y2 and the y1, halfway between the x2 and the x1. So this will simply be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. I hope you can see that. And that's basically all the formulas there that you need. So go away and understand this, even prove these yourself. And you'll be great to start this question. Okay, let's go through the first category. And they ask this every year. It's to do with finding the normal of uh, the equation of a normal curve. I mean, line, sorry. So here, we're given a point P. And we're wanting to find the equation of this normal line right here. So we have y of the curve is 5x minus 1 to the half. And we're given this point P. So in order to find the equation of the normal at P, so we're wanting to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need the gradient of the line, and we need a point on the line. Well, we already have a point on the line. So all we need to find is the gradient of this line. And to do that, we must first find the gradient of this tangent line. So the gradient of this tangent line at point P is, well, if we find, we use our deep knowledge of differentiation now after you watched my differentiation video and did my worksheet. This equals a half times 5x minus 1 to the negative half times 5. And we just simplify that a little bit. We get 5 over 2 times the square root of 5x minus 1. Now, if we want the gradient of the tangent line at the point P, then we do dy by dx at x equals 2, which equals 5 over 2 times the square root of 5 times 2 minus 1, which is just 9. The square root of 9 is 3, which gives us 5 over 6. Now, again, on the worksheet, this is the gradient of the tangent line at P, which is 5 over 6. So the gradient then of the normal line, we could call it uh, M dash, is going to equal to minus 1 over well, the gradient of this tangent line, which is 5 over 6. So it's the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of two, like gradient of two lines, which are perpendicular to one another, the gradient of this line is M, the gradient of this line is M dash, well, m equals minus 1 over m dash. They're the negative reciprocal of each other. So this is negative 6 over 5. So now we have the gradient of this normal line and a point on the line. So point P is 2, 3. So now we can find the equation of the normal line. Line at P. And that's just going to be y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, as seen uh, above we proved. So this is our x1 and y1, and this is our m, we call m dash if you want. So this is y minus 3 equals minus 6 over 5 of x minus 2. And you can expand this out if you want. I'm going to just times by 5 and make it easy. Make it look nice and slick. Minus 6 times this in, x minus 12, or plus 12. So then we get 5y equals minus 6x um, plus 27. So that's the equation of our normal line to the curve at point P. And they ask a question like this every year. And in the worksheet, I've got many different variations of this style of question but it's always quite similar like that. Another thing that they really like to ask is to find uh, the perpendicular bisector. So in this question, they're asking you to find the perpendicular bisector between the points 2, 7 to the line. So you've got a line here. Let's call this A and B if you want. Might make it easier to visualize. So if you have, let's say this is A and this is B then the perpendicular bisector is the line which passes through the point perpendicular to 
the line joining A and B. We can just actually, so you know, 2, 7, and 10, 3. So this line, and this line passes through the midpoint. This is the midpoint between 2, 7, and 10, 3. And again, in order to find the equation of this line, we need to find a point on the line and the gradient of that line. So a point on the line is going to be the midpoint between these two points here. So the midpoint between these two points, as seen above when we derived it, is just simply you know x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. And you know this is your x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is simply going to be 2 plus 10 over 2 comma 7 plus 3 over 2 which is going to equal 12 over 2 is 6 and this is 10 over 2 which is 5. So we've got now the midpoint which is a point on this perpendicular bisector. This is the perp bisector. Um, and then now we need to find the gradient of this perpendicular bisector. Well, we can find it from finding the gradient of this line joining these two points. So finding the gradient of this line and then finding the negative reciprocal to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. So the gradient M of this line from our uh, formulas is this, which equals our Y2 minus y1 is 3 minus 7 over 10 minus 2 10 minus 2 and that's just negative 4 over 8 which is negative a half so therefore we'll call m dash again of our perpendicular bisector is going to be negative 1 over a half or more formally known as 2 so this is 2 so now we have the gradient of our perpendicular bisector and a point on our perpendicular bisector. So therefore the equation of perp bisector is simply y minus y1, which is this, which is 5, equals m, which is 2, x minus x1, which is the x coordinate of our point. So we get y minus 5 equals uh, 2x minus 6, oh, minus 12. So we get y equals 2x um, minus 7. So that's the equation of our perpendicular bisector. And it also says here to find uh, the coordinate of the point uh, when it meets the x-axis. So when it meets the x-axis is when y equals zero. So when y equals zero, we get zero equals two x minus seven. So we get two x equals seven. So it's when x equals uh, seven over two, which is 3.5. So our perpendicular bisector intersects the y-axis when uh, x equals 3.5. Okay, and finally is, um, I think I call this the coordinate geometry question. It's another category, and I've got lots of examples, so you'll be able to see by doing lots of examples of each category what I what I kind of mean by this style of question. And here it sort of uses the uses the gradient of a line and the uh, distance between two points to uh, in a question. So we've got these two points, and whenever doing these questions, I really recommend you know writing out what you know and just taking your time you can be given quite a lot of information on these questions. So we've got points A, which is at A2, and point B, which is at 3B. So the distance AB, so our distance, so we call distance between AB is equal to the square root of 125, and the gradient of the line AB, so we could say M of AB, equals 2. So find the possible values of A and B. Now write out what you know. You know the distance line formula. So the length of a line equals the square root of x2 minus x1. Let's say if you didn't know where to start here. 
Just write out what you know and then see what you can do. And then we know the gradient of a line formula. And it's always using the same formulas, guys. So, you know, understand these formulas and you'll be fine. So, we can get two equations relating A and B. And from that, we'll be able to find the values of A and B. So, let's take this here. We know that, so our length AB, so AB length is going to equal to, remember this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's going to be the square root of x, uh, x2 minus, so 3 minus uh, A squared plus uh, b minus 2 and that equals the square root of 125 and then we can just get rid of these by squaring it so there we have an equation relating a and b and we also have our gradient of a the line a b is 2 so we get y2 minus y1 so that we get 2 so m a b equals y2 which again is b minus 2 over uh, 3 minus a which are x2 minus x1 and that equals 2 from here so we get here that minus b minus 2 equals 2 times 3 minus a so that's another equation relating a and b and the reason I've left it in that form is because I can see that I can substitute these in here so if we then, so we'll call this equation 1 and equation 2, if we substitute this b minus 2 into here, so we've got from equation 1, we've got 3 minus a squared plus b minus 2 squared equals 125. Then if we substitute for b minus 2, this in, we can find our a plus and this is b minus 2 is equal to 2 times 3 minus a all squared equals 125 so then we get 3 minus a squared plus this squared is 4 times 3 minus a squared equals 125 and that gives us 5 of 3 minus a squared equals 125 and that gives us 3 minus a squared equals 25 so therefore 3 minus a equals plus or minus 5 right so we're going to get a minus a equals if we take the 3 over we get 2 so we get an a equals negative 2 or we also get if we take the negative we get a minus a equals uh, minus 5 equals minus 8 so then our a equals 8 Okay, and then we can find the corresponding B values using equation 2. So from equation 2, when A equals negative 2, we get, if we substitute A equals negative 2 into here, we get B minus 2 equals 2 times 3, just make sure I'm getting this right, 3 minus A, 3 minus, and our A is negative 2. So we get b minus 2 equals, well this is 3 minus minus 2, so that's 3, so that's 2 times 5, which is 10. And then we take the 2 over, so we get b equals 12. When a equals negative 2, and when a equals 8, we get b minus 2 equals 2 times 3 minus 8 which equals b minus 2 equals what? minus 5, so minus 10. Take the 2 over, we get b equals um, negative 8. So our solutions are when a equals negative 2, and b equals 12, or when a equals 8, b equals negative 8. 
And that's uh, me going through those main categories which I divide up and just doing a good representation of each of those questions here. So go ahead and download this worksheet and be able to un make sure you understand these fundamental equations here and derive them for yourself. I'd recommend doing that. And then just simply look at each style of question. So I've, I, I really pick apart these questions. I want you guys to understand, I really pick apart these questions and put similar styles together. So these are really similar styles. You can see just in, in the aesthetics of the question, they're very similar. And here they're finding the perpendicular bisector. It's all finding the perpendicular bisector. Seven marks, seven marks, all answered for you. These geometry questions, these are coordinate geometry questions, all involving midpoints, distance, you know, equation of the line, this sort of stuff. And then the really, the really big ones are the when they mix them all, and they mix and match it all together. And that is all of those done here for you. And I've answered them all below. So there's heaps and heaps of my answers there. 